hello welcome back I am gonna feed this crusty sourdough starter that I left on the counter way too long I'm gonna get that fed I've still yet to make a loaf of bread since I brought it out crazy today I am going to be um, canning deer meat I've never done this before uh, I'm a I'm slightly intimidated by it. It's not that I think I'm gonna ruin it. I just wanna do it right. And it's just unknown, never done it before. But it needs to be done. We harvested um, one deer here last week. And then my husband, his dad, my oldest and their cousin went to Missouri and they had, they got seven so we had eight deer total we had to take care of and we're in the very beginning of our deer season here in Georgia so it is our goal to pack the freezer and now the shelves full we're not going to have enough room to put all of this in the freezer especially as the season continues so I'm going to do my best to put some on the shelf so I think this will be good because once the baby is born I'll have meat already cooked and prepared I'm going to try to do some with potatoes and carrots, and um, then I can kind of just have like a dump and go meal that I just have to heat up and maybe add to, so that would be so helpful. I know not everyone is super excited about the idea of hunting deer, but for our family, this is a huge um, thing. If we tag out, we'll probably not have to buy red meat all year. If we do, it'll be very minimal. We grind the deer, we put it into roasts, and um, now we'll can it. We also keep the back strap hole because that's the most tender part of the deer, and we use that for like steaks. So, deer is a huge staple in our home. I've had to really learn how to cook it. Uh, it's kind of a learning curve. It's not just like something you can just cook up real quick. It does require some planning and time. So I'm hoping by canning it, it will kind of help with the planning and the time portion of it. Because I'm not always super good about uh, planning. <laughs> and then we'll still have all of our chickens that we butchered, raised and butchered. So between all of the deer and all the chickens we should not have to buy meat for a while. And that is a huge part of grocery bill is the meat. And then having the garden, I hope to have some greens in the greenhouse. Um, I can kind of save money on that and we'll be doing pretty good, hopefully. <laughs> on the grocery side of things, it's gonna require some um, creativity on my part, but who doesn't like a good challenge? Especially when it comes to food. I like to challenge myself in the kitchen and um, figure out ways to grow uh, what we're eating and what we need. Like last night I made um, bone broth. Well, actually it's more like a meat stock from the venison. So when I can the venison, I'm going to add that meat stock to it just to kind of up its nutrition content. And use the bones give it a purpose but I'm throwing everything in the pot and I'm like oh next year I gotta do better with onions I gotta do better with carrots I gotta do better with celery you know that stuff that um, is easy to grow here I just need to plan better and do better but hopefully by next year everything I put in that pot aside from the salt um, will have been brought off this land so that's really an exciting thing especially as you get going in the whole homesteading farming um, world <laughs> seeing the fruits of your labor literally all come together and you've just made this meal completely off your land like it's such a good feeling and we don't do it to be self-sufficient really my drive in starting all of this was how can I feed my kids well how can I give them the best start in life with the best food? Uh, and it just kind of spiraled. 
into where we are today. My husband grew up hunting. I did not grow up, grow up hunting. We fished a little bit, but never anything to like stock a freezer. And he has definitely grown up doing this. So I'm very thankful for that because it's now instilling it into me and into our children. And um, it's becoming a really great thing for our health and it's a great way of life. So I am going to try to show you <laughs> me fumbling my way through this uh, canning process. I really just want you to see that even though it's something I've never done before, just have the courage and the confidence to just go do it. Uh, it it's people have been doing this for years. Like I can read, you can read directions and do it. yesterday's um, canning jars out of the car we got home um, not yesterday the day before we got home pretty late and <laughs> these just sat so the first round I did you can see that the liquids like only to here um, from what I'm told this is completely fine I did not pack these jars tight enough um, with meat and potatoes and carrots so I learned my lesson second round um, you can see I did a much better job really just shoving and pounding everything down into the jars and these look um, a lot fuller and so much better I need to wash this round the first round off because I did have a jar break in the canner um, it could have been that my jars just were not hot enough um, maybe that jar had already like some sort of imperfection that had happened. Um, maybe not with the manufacturer, but just 
being used before or being in the house it might have been an older jar so that one did break in the canner so now everything is kind of <laughs> dirty and greasy from that round um but you can see second round came out a whole lot better so i between the two rounds we ended up with seven we ended up with 15 jars of food it may take two of these to feed my family i'm not really sure but either way i'm saving freezer space the potatoes that we grew are not going to waste they're preserved and like i said we'll have some quick easy meals that are shelf stable so last night i decided to try pressure canning in the camper <laughs> in the RV. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to see if it would work. So I have like a big canning jar. I mean, it's, it wouldn't even take up this whole frame. That's what I use to do the quarts with. Um, but I also have a 12 quart that you saw just before that a friend of mine actually gave me. She bought a house and it was in the garage and it was like, it's older than me. It was like 1982 and it was still in its like original box. I don't even know that it was ever used. Um, and I'm like, yes, I want this. Don't throw this out. Give this to me. If you want it back when you're like ready to start learning to can, I'll give it back to you, but don't throw it away. So I used that last night and it worked really well. I only had one jar, not seal. Um, and I just stuck it in the refrigerator. We'll be able to eat that. No big deal. Um, but it totally worked in the RV. Now, I would never do it when it's warm outside because it heated the whole house. Now, it's been cold here, um, so it worked out perfectly. I turned the heaters off and it kept the place warm. But what it did also do is it made a ton of condensation down the windows and the walls. So, we figured if I was going to do it in the house, if I was going to do it in the RV, if it was too cold or rainy or snowing and I wanted to can, we would have to turn our dehumidifier on. So we turned our dehumidifier on um, when we figured out everything was getting damp. And I mean, it sucked it right up. No problem. Everything was fine. So if you're going to do it in your RV, do it when it's cold out and make sure you have some sort of dehumidifier running. Um, because... If not, if you do it in the summer, not only are you going to sweat <laughs> and heat yourself out, but there's going to be a ton of moisture. And as we know in RVs, um, that can lead to mold problems. So if you're going to do it in the winter, definitely make sure you still have your dehumidifier running. But what I am doing, though, to completely get around that and what I'll do in the summer, whether we have an RV or a house... Um, Please don't let us have an RV in the summer. Oh, Lord, please. Um, is I have a camp chef. And we can set that outside and keep all of the heat and the moisture outside. It is amazing. We did it at the pavilion. We did green beans. My friend came over and showed us her setup and what she does and helped us with that. Um, and it was amazing. Um, totally worth the investment. I will link the one that we have. Do, do your research. Um, find one that works for you. But if you are going to be doing any sort of food preserving, canning, pressure canning, I would highly recommend it. Um, we used like a little one burner um, camp chef at Amanda's house the other day. And we put that right on the porch with a propane tank worked wonderful we got a bunch of jars of food now if it's outside though you have to be diligent about watching your pressure and your temperature and making sure if you're water bathing you're maintaining a boil and if you're um, pressure canning you're maintaining your pressure you can't just like set it and leave it you still have to watch it um, where when it's in the house or when it was in the RV last night it was nice because I was cooking dinner and I could hear it and we were watching TV and I could hear it and um, it's just easier to turn it on and continue doing what needed to be done. So there is my whole um, tips and tricks for what I'm learning as a new pressure canner. Um, I've pressure canned a lot of vegetables. Actually, I take that back. I haven't really done a whole lot of pressure canning. What I have done 
is vegetables um, but meat is a whole nother territory so I'm going to continue to get proficient in that and continue to keep experimenting with different flavors and recipes I only added salt and some that bone broth you saw me make earlier um, because I figured let's just get the basics down and I can always add to it later on um, but my next thing I want to learn is how to cure meat so the more I can put on a shelf without um, resources like heat um, electricity propane jars lids um, the better especially if we're um, possibly going to be moving off the grid I've got to be thinking about ways that I can um, be proficient in food preservation without pulling a lot of energy and resources if necessary so that was a lot of words <laughs> thank you though for watching and following along if you have any questions um, I'd be happy to try to help you or um, point you in the direction of maybe other resources um, for me I as far as resources have gone I've done some like internet searching but really I've been using my community I have friends within my community that know how to pressure can that are comfortable pressure canning that pressure can they'll do a hundred jars at a time um, and it's just no big deal to them they have been doing this since childhood and so I have been using in my community around me and their knowledge I mean I even sent her a video is my sounds right like does this sound good she's like yes it's perfect find your community out there ask your friends ask your neighbors do you know how to can is there any suggestions you can give me um, and yes use YouTube use the internet but just be mindful there's a lot of information out there that's that can be dangerous and we're messing with food, we're messing with our health, so we just have to be proficient and make sure we are doing the best that we can Bob. do. Thank you so much for watching and following along. I hope you're encouraged, I hope you're inspired, and I can't wait to um, show you kind of some more things that we're planning on with um, venison, with deer season. Um, like I said, this is a huge, huge staple for our family, and um, I can kind of see as people start really living off the land um, and things going the way they're going with prices and inflation, this becoming another option for food source. So thank you for watching and may the Lord bless and keep you until next time.